In the current modern world, there are a lot of things to worry about. Things like getting stable Wi-Fi and internet connection, or trying to avoid traffic so you can charge your phone before your battery dies. One thing that we rarely ever think about is what would happen if we ever ran out of water. This isn't surprising, because for many of us, all we have to do is turn on our taps and we get a steady stream of water. Plus, the Earth is made up of 70% water, so how could we run out of water? Well, the interesting answer to this is that it is possible for us to run out of water. In fact, not only is this possible, but experts have estimated that we are on the edge of a global water crisis. If this sounds scary, well, it only gets worse from here. So make sure to watch until the very end to learn about what's going on if we run out of water. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of things, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It is important to note that even though the Earth is 70% water, not all this can be used for human consumption. If you have ever been to the beach or tasted seawater, then you will know that ocean water is more or less useless to humans because we can't drink it. Because, well, it's bad for our health and way too salty. The water that is safe for us to use is fresh water, and this is only 3% of the water that is available on Earth. Yep. 67% of the water on Earth is bad for humans. Well, unless some science stuff is done on it. But we'll get to that later. If you think that 3% isn't a lot of water to sustain Earth's population, well, it kind of gets worse from here, because the actual number is less than that. You see, in the 3%, we still have to account for water that is frozen up in glaciers. So that brings the original number even lower. In reality, the actual percentage of water available for us is only 1% which doesn't sound like enough to support the almost 7 billion people that we have on Earth. Even worse, science has found out that we cannot make water in the labs, so that option is out of it. Now, 1% of water means that there is going to be water shortages because it is just not enough for everyone. But have you ever wondered what would happen if that 1% of water got used up? Well, a lot of things are going to happen, and none of them are going to be nice. First off, the Earth is going to get very, very dry. You think everywhere is dry during the summer? That's going to be nothing compared to what we're going to see when the Earth runs out of water. The Earth is going to be so dry that we are going to see an increase in earthquakes, and the earthquakes are going to be even more severe than what we are used to seeing. We are already seeing similar stuff happen in California, though it isn't as bad as it could be. California is known for its dry climate, and the Imperial Valley is one of the driest places in the state. The valley has experienced so much water loss that the ground has caved in by about 100 feet in the last centuries. And according to scientists, this is only going to get worse in the coming years. We are all kind of used to seeing countries fighting over all sorts of things like natural resources and especially crude oil. But one thing that we probably never thought about was that people could fight over water. Yeah, it sounds super ridiculous to even say it aloud, but it might shock you to know that this is actually something that has been predicted. Way back in 1995, Ismael Sarageldin, who was the vice president of the World Bank, predicted that the wars of the next century will be fought over water. Just to be clear, we are currently in the century that he spoke of, and we are 22 years in, which means that his prediction is due to kick in at any moment from now. Can you imagine a situation where countries invade each other and go to war because of water? That's crazy, and it seems like the sort of thing that you'd see in a futuristic sci-fi movie, and not in real life. But it is already happening. In fact, it has been happening for years in some less developed countries. In Sudan, an ethnic conflict broke out in 2003 that led to the loss of life of about 400,000 people. While the conflict had other contributing factors, the main reason was traced to ethnic struggles over ownership and access to a decreasing water supply. If wars somehow don't break out between countries and ethnicities, there's the fact that the plant life is going to suffer. We all learned in the first or second grade that plants need water to survive, so this means that plants are going to be affected by this. Not just the little plants that you have in your living room, on your office desk, but all plants. Food crops, big trees, all sorts of plants. This means that food prices are going through the ceiling. There is going to be a huge famine, and people are going to get hungry. Not only hungry, but they are also going to be thirsty. What happens when people are hungry? Well, we can expect to see a lot of chaos, riots, robbery, and increase in crime, stuff like that. All because the earth ran out of water. You know, the thing you buy in a bottle for less than a dollar? 
who could have thought that it could make things get so bad? So if the war doesn't take people out, hunger and thirst are going to. Either way we look at it, humans are going to be seriously affected. The good news, however, is that some measures are already being taken to ensure that the Earth does not run out of water. Other measures are being taken to ensure that even if we do run out of water, there are ways for us to get more water. Some governments all over the world have constructed or are constructing dams to serve as a source of water. Now this is an excellent plan because it ensures that people have access to water for a long time. But the bad thing about this is that the dam loses water to evaporation. And what this means is that the amount of water available in the dam decreases every single day. Also, because a dam is basically just a giant bowl of water, it means that salts begin to accumulate in the water. Salt is naturally present in fresh water, and over time, they begin to accumulate in the dam water, which makes the water go bad. This means that constructing dams isn't exactly a good idea in the long run. Another good choice is recycling water. We already recycle so many things, so why don't we consider recycling water? It's not like we have enough water to last until the end of time, so recycling water should definitely be put on the menu. This means that all your wastewater is going to be recycled and purified for use. Potentially, the water you flush down the toilet could be the same water that runs out of the tap in your kitchen. That sounds gross, but hey, desperate times call for desperate measures. The water is also going to be purified, so that counts for something. The idea of water recycling is nothing new. In fact, it has been around for a long time, and astronauts are already kind of used to it. It has been used on spaceships for quite some time now, so it shouldn't be too hard to do the same on Earth. We just have to ask NASA for the technology to it. Speaking of NASA, they have also come up with some ideas on how we could get water from outer space. And, well, these ideas just sound insane. One of the ideas involves dragging icy comets from space to Earth and then defreezing the water. If you think this is extreme, it's because it is. And who's to know what weird stuff is frozen deep in the comet? It sounds like it's going to end up bringing some weird extraterrestrial life to Earth. If you think dragging an icy comet from space to Earth is extreme, well, it gets even more interesting. Now, if you were listening in science class, then you will already know that there is water on Mars. Some scientists have recommended harvesting water from Mars and then pumping it back to Earth. There are so many questions regarding this. How is this supposed to work, exactly? How do they plan to get the water from Mars to Earth? How are they going to extract the water from Mars? This is so confusing. In all of this, the best option seems to be the recycling of water. Yeah, it is kind of extreme, but it still makes way more sense than stealing water from Mars or dragging an icy comet into Earth. So the next time you think that we have a limitless amount of water on Earth, Think about this video and turn off the faucet when you don't need running water. What would you do if the Earth suddenly ran out of water? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and hit the like button if you haven't. And don't forget to subscribe and share this video so your friends get to see it too.